We've been accused of associating with terror for putting up a news article about Hamas's invasion of Israel. And somehow we've got no recourse for that. There's nobody you can talk to. It's like living in a literal big tech, you know, misinformation age where they control what is truth. Now, controlling political conversations under the guise of safety, which is what Albanese keeps saying this is about, it's about mm -hmm. safety and keeping everyone safe. That's a very totalitarian, socialist-style idea. And to blame election losses on false information instead of a rejection of a government position is also nonsense. It's the idea that the government is never wrong, so the public had to be misled. Now, does this bill, in your view, violate the fundamental human rights of Australians and undermine the reputation of Parliament? Because Parliament should not be seeking to do this kind of thing, surely? No, it definitely shouldn't. Um, there's no question about that. And look, I, I think it's tremendously dangerous. I mean, there's no other way of looking at it. And when you when you see that this is a fairly common model that's been in more or less the same terms rolled out across the Western world, you know, you have to look at what's going on out there. And I think what we've seen over the last period, particularly the COVID period, is this weaponization of the emergency. In this case, it's safety, you know, information, safety and information. In the case of COVID, it was an emergency. You know, you were all suffering from this great flu. Uh, in the case of climate, uh, it was the climate emergency. And on each occasion, those uh, particular emergencies have led to the erosion of civil liberties and freedoms through legislative means. No better example of that than the COVID period. Um, and parliaments seem to be continually lapping them up without any foresight. I mean, it does feel as though people are walk, sleepwalking into this. Even the left, even the Labor Party, who, who are championing this bill, must sit back at one point and think, well, if the tide turns, this could turn against us and be used as a weapon against us. This is not good for either side of politics. All we ask for is a free and open debate. Um, there are, of course, there are limits on freedom of speech. And, and, you know, that just has to be the case. People cannot be allowed to walk around inciting violence and those sorts of things. But that's not what we're talking about. And if you look at the example of the freedom of information application that we did out of this office to the Department of Home Affairs, which showed very clearly that the department was a part of a greater enterprise to censor Australians' free speech effectively by various means in, in utilising uh, foreign companies to find posts during COVID and then deliver those to the social media company for whatever their purposes were, mainly pulling them down or censoring them. Many of those posts were absolutely true. They were accurate at the time, they're accurate now, and they were getting censored for it. That was just a little microcosm of what would happen if this bill was put up. Who knows what's true sometimes in the middle of these things, but that's the point of the exercise. The free speech is like the market of ideas. People work out what's not true and what's ridiculous. And to clamp it down is the most dangerous political step any government could take, and it needs to fail.